Afternoon, everyone. Sorry, running just a few minutes late. Uh, <coughs> usual format for us, which will be first <coughs> 10 minutes or so for broadcasters, uh, and then any internationals that are here, and then we'll uh, cameras off and do uh, a daily's brief. Uh, uh, no introductions necessary, of course. So let's just uh, crack on in. Um, Andy, let's go. Good afternoon. Can you sum up what it, what it means to be back here, please? Well, I wanted to start with a short introduction, but Steve interrupted because the reason is that, as a matter of fact, I shouldn't be here halfway the season because it, it's meaning that uh, things are not going well as, uh, as uh, foreseen in the beginning of the season. But anyhow, um, I'm glad to be back. And it's, uh, it's a few years ago that I was here in, the, in a similar situation and uh, try to help out when I was asked to, to do so. So, but first of all, I shouldn't be here, but I'm here. That's the reality of the, today's uh, situation. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here because I have worked at that time with a lot of uh, love to the club and to, the, to work with the players is always a, a pleasure. You're obviously here because there have been problems. Can you fix the problems quickly? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, of course not. It's, uh, um, if you if you look back a bit to the last season where there was this uh, huge success in, in in winning the title, then of course there you go into the next seasons. You have your targets, your aims, and and the aims are the same: getting the championship again. Although. In the Premier League, that's not that's not easy, as you know even better than I do. But um, that's a, that's a main target, and the other targets, of course, to go into the Champions League and, and the FA Cup. Uh, but that's not easy to fix. If if you sometimes after a championship, you might relax a bit as a team, and then but then you get a wake up call somewhere somewhere in in, in September. But the situation is that uh, that they were down to all to last week to one one point of the relegation zone, which was uh, was frightening for everyone inside the club. And but it's not easy to to say I'm here and tomorrow the problem is solved. When you watched the game on Saturday, the way the team played in the first half, you would have probably been forgiven for looking to who was sat next to you and said. Which team is it I'm taking over? Because they played quite well in the first half. What did you see when you watched them on Saturday? Yeah, I think you're right. I uh, I was in the stand and of course I, I saw the game and they were playing in a way, I think, not the whole 45 minutes. There were also some sloppy moments. But in general, they were playing like like they, they enjoyed it very much. And, uh, and sometimes they even, I think, went a little bit over the top and didn't kill it off after 2-0. But uh, it was it was good to see how they can play. So the quality is there. You would have also heard though on Saturday the booms for the likes of Cesc Fabregas and Diego Costa. There was a little bit of negativity towards even Hazard from some fans as well. Is that something that you feel you have to fix quite quickly? Is that a, a priority? Well, yesterday I talked uh, I talked fully to the to the to the squad. And uh, of course, we talked a little bit about the past. Why? Why we? Why I'm here? Yeah, the reason why we are down. On one hand, but on the other hand, I told them, well, things happen in football, and I want everyone to look, or here or at home, in the mirror, and uh, not just two seconds, but longer, to see what what anyone can from now on can contribute to uh, to the way up. That's where I was emphasizing on, and uh, not to look back so much. And of course, the, we cannot ignore what what has happened in the in the, in the recent past. But I, I asked them and, and and told them as big professionals to look in the mirror and see if you can be autocritical and give yourself the best of yourself to the team. So I like to look forward. Do you think they have the, the stomach for the fight to try and win those fans back? It's, there must be a, a great desire to play. 
Yeah, and uh, if you don't have that desire, please knock on my door and then we'll talk, but we'll talk briefly. In terms of your coaching stuff, because is, is Didier Drogba someone you want to try and bring in to work with you? Well, I, I, I worked with him uh, uh, five, six years ago and uh, I was delighted to, to have such a professional in the squad and he is a, a legend already in uh, in this club but also outside this club in the world so it, it's nice with the guys with these big hearts to uh, to connect them somehow to the club the only thing is that uh, at this moment he is uh, he is playing under uh, in, in in montreal but i think all the big clubs but also the the, the smaller clubs they they have these these specific the guys, figures who can make a very good, first of all for themselves, to go into whatever they like, being ambassador or being coach or being manager or whatever, whatever they like, but they must be given the opportunity to do so. But second, I think it's important that uh, they are kind of, uh, yeah, how shall I say, they, they give the brand uh, Chelsea a big image. Yeah. Worldwide, yeah, worldwide. In terms of spending in January, being an interim manager, are you able to impact upon that, or do you get the sense that the board will wait until they spend their money with a permanent manager? Being interim manager is very good addition to what your question was, which means that uh, uh, the future has to be uh, determined by whoever is in charge then or now. So you wouldn't expect to make signings in January? Well, uh, let's go into the, do, do the next uh, few games and then we'll see. But we didn't stipulate, but I know also that it's, a, that it's always open. But first I like to, to embed a bit now in the, uh, in the first days, the first games, and then we'll see what happens. And it depends also on, on the results coming up. Chelsea fans will remember fondly your, your first spell with the club and I remember them at the end of that spell singing, we want you to stay. But as you know, the, the managerial game, you're judged on, on results and success. And some might look at what happened with you after you left with Turkey, with Russia, with Holland and ask, has he still got it? What do you say to people who, who wonder about that? Well, then you have to, to, to watch everything and analyze in every country you are mentioning how it was. Uh, I think with, uh, with Russia, we, we did a very good uh, uh, European Championship. We had a lack of one goal for qual qualification and it was a tough group. It was a tough group with, you can see it, which were the opponents. Uh, we played even England. Uh, and with Turkey was a, was the same. We had to play Croatia, Germany. So and and this one is, is qualified, and the second is going into the playoff. Then you are very close to the to the second. But nevertheless, the fact is that there was no qualification. Regarding the last job, Holland, that was uh, of course uh, they had a very good result in the in the last World Cup in Brazil. Uh, and then you get also a kind of expectation or a little bit of hangover. And uh, unfortunately, and I regretted myself very much that uh, I could not finish that job because uh, they decided, the general director decided uh, in halfway the qualification when we were in third position to, uh, to quit my job. And that was, to be honest, I was very disappointed about that decision because we were, we were on the driving seat to, to go into the last three, four games and to get it done. So that was, that was uh, I didn't finish, I could not finish that job. And it was disappointing for me, to be honest to you. And what message do you have to the Chelsea fans about what lays ahead between now and May? Pardon, again. What message do you have to the Chelsea fans for what lays ahead between now and May? Well, first of all, no manager can guarantee uh, three-point results every week, but we have to, uh, to show, I think that's important, then the results will be a consequence automatically of that. We have to show the, the, to ourselves, to the player themselves, to the club, but also to the fans uh, inside Chelsea, but also abroad, that, uh, that the team has the big desire to, uh, to wash away the last half year and go up to, uh, to this next coming game. Just given the, given the squad that Chelsea have got, the players that they've got here, have you, have you been able to work out how 
they've managed to find themselves in this in this situation. Well, then I go, then I have to go back in the past. And what I said before, I don't want to go much. It's for me more relevant now. And I don't want to have, that's what I said inside when I had my, my, my conversations. Um, I didn't want to have long conversation. I didn't want to have much of an information because the information normally you get can be somehow colored. Yeah, and I don't want, I want to have my own judgment about the performance on the pitch, on the training, uh, outside the pitch, in the locker room, wherever I'm, I'm observing. And I want to make my own judgment. Because that's why I said to, to various people I, I spoke with that I, I don't want to have much of an information. They, they have to show now. They have to show now what they are capable to. What's, the, what's your judgment so far of what you've seen on the training ground of the players? Well, I've, I've been working now uh, uh, a couple of days with the, with the team, two, two sessions. Uh, I cannot, because I'm, I'm, I'm analysing and watching a lot, I cannot see that, that players and then, of course, the key players you're watching as well, that they, they, they have a lack of, of ambition, of desire at this moment. So uh, I cannot complain and, and uh, I should not complain. If I, if I come here now and I have to complain about the attitude in, in, in from, from the previous training sessions, then it wouldn't be good. And I have no single complaint regarding that. You're 11 points off fourth place at the moment, presumably that is the target. Do you think you can get this team up to fourth, into the top four? Mathematically, yes. <laughs> Mathematically, it's possible if you can. You can add, then it's possible, but this league is, is a very strong league and especially proven this year by, by with all the respect, the, the, the clubs who are usually not in the top, which is Leicester, yeah, which is uh, Crystal Palace, which is the upcoming opponent, which is the upcoming opponent, Watford. Amazing and, and I think refreshingly they are now in, in, in the top of the league. So it, it means that all the teams, they can kill each other. They can kill each other. If, if you have seen and you've seen all the games, even more than I in, in the last half year in, in the Premier League, then any team can kill another in team. In that respect, do you think it's changed dramatically since you, you were last here in 2009? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it has been changed regarding, regarding this. Uh, yeah, they are very competitive now. Yes. Gus, Andy mentioned your previous time here in 2009. You had a great record then, I think 11 wins out of 13 games. Do you think that good record will help you this time around? Was it more games? In the Premier League, 11 out of 13. <laughs> and you won the FA Cup. When, when the past is coming, you try to exaggerate also the performances. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was 30 and I lost one to Tottenham Hotspur. That's all. We didn't even lose to Barcelona, but we were kicked out in the, in the semis. Um, okay, I, I, I believe you. Once more, <laughs> once more the question, please. So do you think your very good record here previously will help you this time around? Different group of players. If you see the players at that time, uh, although they were not performing well as well, but they were also uh, like Didier Drogba, and like uh, Lampard and Balak and I forget uh, Shen. These were, were all also big players at that time, were leaders. And now we have also big players, but it's, it's diff difficult to compare. It's difficult to compare. Warren. Because you said at the start that you sh you're basically saying you, sh you shouldn't be here. So. Essentially, are you saying that the players have let the club down and do you have any sympathy at all for Jose Mourinho? Yeah, of course. I think he, uh, if, you, if you look at his record over the years, it's amazing, amazing uh, record. Respectful what he did in, in various clubs, which titles he won. I don't know by heart how many, but that, that, that were many, many titles. So a lot of respect uh, for that. But then, then nevertheless, things happen in, in the football as it happened here. And then people take decisions which they have, uh, they have taken. And then I have to, to go on when I'm asked. But it's, it's, yeah, of course, theoretically, I shouldn't have been here. It's true. Because as we mentioned, Turkey, Rush, you've been in that position before where you've left a club or a country where they, the players haven't performed. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but that's uh, part of the business. That's part, also part of the business. That, that I think there's no one coach in the world who has not been sacked, unless you start in your first year. After first week, they give you one year most of the time. Yeah. But what can I say to that? Uh, everyone has that experience. Uh, so, yeah. um, just to go back to the game against Watford as well, the fact that if Watford come here and get a result or beat Chelsea, it won't be a surprise judging how the Premier League is this season. It'll give you an indication of just where the Premier League is. Well, a lot of respect for, for Watford if you see how they play. They're very disciplined, first of all. And they have a very, very strong striker, strikers couple. The two, Diallo and Dini, they, they, are, they are very, very dangerous. They have, they have shown that not just by, by incident, but, but frequently. So it, a lot of respect, a lot of respect for them. And we must be, uh, yeah, it, as I said before, it can go all the way. And hopefully positively for us in this, we have to go into a sequence of, of good results. Carry. Uh, Gus, you said that in the previous Chelsea's over there, are, in the previous Chelsea's over there, are a lot of quality players that were leaders. Is that what you're looking for now? Leadership within the team. Is this a team honestly low on confidence? Well, when I see them play now in the, in, the, in the last training, when I see them play in the first half, I think second half. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we were a bit, a bit sloppy defensively, um, but when I see them playing, then they can play. So there's in, in deep down there's no lack of confidence the way they can perform. But what I like always in teams is to have a spine uh, from from central defense towards the, the uh, defending midfield position towards the attackers in the spine to have strong people who can lead and can, can coach during the game as well. That's what I like. And I think we can do even more with, with the team. We can. One of the players that is the stark contrast from last season is Eden Hazard. Player of the year last season, really struggling to see the confidence and form this season. Captain at his national side. In the past, you brought the for into captain, the soccer he's really excelled, though he wouldn't have put himself forward as a captain. Is he a player <coughs> more responsibility for? Could that change his form? Well, he has had a, a terrific season last last year and, and that's also normal that you get a little bit of a setback after that. Um, but I think he's a, he's, a, he's a key player, he can be a key player uh, as a captain of the national team in, in Belgium. But also here he can be he can be a key player when when he's getting back in his in his shape and uh, he was unlucky to 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 be injured recently, which gave him another setback. But we'll see today for the first time he uh, he practiced not full session. We'll see tomorrow, and I think with him is the same to get the eager back to to perform. And John Terry and Branislav Ivanovic, two players you work with back in your first spell here, still really strong leaders in this side? Yeah, they can. John has proven already uh, many, many years and Ivan coming in in the last years has proven that he can be a leader as well. Yeah. Uh, can you confirm if Chelsea are talking to Didier Drogba and Montreal Impact? Are you trying to bring him back? Is that the official process? The official process, I, I don't know, but I, I, I spoke openly from the bottom of my heart, but that such a, such impact players can be can be huge for for the club, and how it's going on now from now on to the end of contract or whatsoever, it's not. That's the people have to deal with that, not me. This is the second time you've come here for a short spell. Is that all you're interested in, or would you be keen to be here for longer at Chelsea? No, first we said let's go to the to the halfway May when the last game is, and hopefully a little bit longer. Uh, but then, then we'll see. I'm, uh, I will see what what will happen. As long as I feel desire, as long as I feel passion, and I feel because it's not an overnight decision I take. I must feel inside my inside my heart that um, that I am uh, passionate to to work with the guys, and and I feel that that you you get this thrill in your in your stomach to to go onto the pitch and uh, and work with them. And can I get some thoughts, please, on Louis van Gaal, your countryman at Manchester United? Do you believe he can turn around his 
his own fortune there at Old Trafford. Well, they 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 are struggling as well. That's that's for sure. That's not just. That also has much to do what we said before that the the, the Premier League has strength has, has strengthened its quality, capacity, intensity. Yeah, on on a, on to a high level. Okay, we'll do two more. Uh, Andy, please. Yeah. Hey, this, um, you, you said you want to focus on the future now, not the past. Is, is that something you want the fans to do as well? They obviously made their point the other day, but would you hope they now sort of get behind the team? And, and also, what kind of frame of mind is Diego Costa? Of course, of course I hope the fans will 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 support the team uh, as they did briefly also when some beautiful actions were were executed during the last game. That's true, but but the fans. They must also think about the, 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 the. They have the right to think and to express themselves about the, the recent uh, past. That's that's for sure. But once once, the, but the team has to take the initiative together to get the fans. They're not lost, I think, but to get them back as soon as possible. It's it's up to the team. And then I think with the fans, what I know from Chelsea in the recent years, they 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 back up. They back up the, the team and the club. But the team has to show it. Gus, will you be giving more of the, the Chelsea youth team more chances than what they've had in the past? First of all, let uh, um, um, of course some youth players are, are participating in, in the first team training sessions. But I, I want to have first uh, my, my analysis, my observations and then we'll decide. And it depends also on the, on the development, what is going on in the next, uh, let's say, many games. Whether whether we do that yes or no, but first I I I must be convinced of their quality, and we'll see what what the situation is. A little bit too early to say now. Tomorrow I'll, I will bring in a youngster of 17, 18, or 19 years. But in general, if 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 they show that they are competitive, then I'm not against, in the contrary, to give them uh, options. Thank um, Gus, so you want to rule out taking the job in the long term? In the long term, you said to. Sorry, it's hand shot up just as I said it. So. Just, just to clarify what you said, you basically you wouldn't you wouldn't rule out taking the job in the long term. You're going to say no. We said no, no. We we, we talked about uh, till the end of the season. Would you Point. help the board identify a long term successor? Well, I, I I'm. I with several. I've been with several clubs, and every now and then I have my conversations, but not in an, in a formal or official uh, relation. Okay, we have to end it there, guys. Thank you very much. Cameras off, and then we'll move to uh, the papers. Thank you. Yeah.